I love mice. The mouse has no mechanical limits like an analog stick when it comes to precision and speed. Never having to rely on aim assist makes every shot feel more satisfying as you have no doubt it was all you. The keyboard though, the keyboard. Having fully moved on after trying it for years, the keyboard effing sucks for gaming and FPS gaming in particular. This stems from the simple, obvious fact it was designed for typing, not gaming. And while we've made it work, bear in mind people have also made Dark Souls work by beating it using nothing but a half-broken Rock Band controller and voice commands. In the great crossplay debate between console and PC, no one even pretends the keyboard is ideal. They just argue over the benefits of a mouse versus aim assist. If you want that sweet, sweet mouse, then I guess you'll have to put up with that keyboard. But what if I told you there was a third way? A way to keep your keybinds and experience with keyboards while granting you the full 8-way or even the full 360 movement possibilities of an analog stick, all with your favorite mouse? I've been using the Azeron keypad for well over a year now. During that time, I've used it for everything from FPS to RTS games, with my requirement always being that during my play session, I wouldn't need to touch my keyboard once for any reason. Before the Azeron, I tried several cheaper keypads before. Back when I was playing on a sensitivity so low, I kept hitting the edge of my keyboard and needed something more compact. In particular, Razer's line of Orbweaver and Tartarus keypads. Azeron objectively blows these product lines out of the water, but admittedly you'd expect this for the difference in price. The Razer keypads are just keyboards compacted for one hand, and no matter how much RGB they add, it's still a keyboard and it still plays like a keyboard. The Azeron does not. The Azeron plays like the next stage in gaming controls, the amalgamation of console and PC. The Azeron plays like a hybrid between controller and keyboard with the best of both worlds. Instead of using your opposable and dexterous thumb to click the space bar every now and then, it's used for 8 access or full 360 degree movement just like with a controller, and in fact uses an actual Xbox 360 analog stick for movement. An immediate concern might be the difference between WASD or controller mode for the Azeron, as if you've ever tried to rebound the Razer Tartarus thumbstick to WASD, you know it's not exactly ideal for any sort of gaming. Fortunately, the Azeron keypad in WASD mode allows you to move in 8 different directions with one single finger. One of my biggest complaints with a normal keyboard is that your keybinds and movements are tethered because you're using the same fingers to move both with WASD and also to cast your abilities. Further, to move your character diagonally requires two simultaneous button holds, and so trying to move diagonally while also using any keybind can be very difficult and clunky. Meanwhile, on the Azeron keypad, your left thumb is responsible for all movement using the analog stick, and so you can focus all your other fingers purely on their own respective keybinds. If I'm being honest, this is the primary reason I first ran with the Azeron keypad. Simply moving with WASD was never the problem, but I hated the clunkiness of trying to move and use keybinds at the same time in a competitive FPS setting. Growing up almost exclusively on console, when I made the switch to PC, it's just like I said before. I love the mouse, but always loathed using a keyboard for gaming. The Azeron allows me to keep my mouse, keep my highly customizable PC keybinds, and still move around freely like I'm on a controller. These upsides are indeed as good as they sound, but then that's why it costs more than any other gaming keypad. So, it's very ergonomically comfortable and makes gaming with keybinds more streamlined and fluid. But how is it for competitive FPS gaming? One of the first things to understand is in a LAN based tournament setting, using the Azeron keypad is likely to be approved, but only when using an onboard memory profile with WASD controls. No software macros, no full 360 degree controller movement versus standard mouse and keyboard players. One of the most common worries I've heard online, and one I shared myself before my first purchase, is your strafe speed. As you may well know, on a keyboard, a mere press or unpress of a button can make you change directions, whereas an analog stick requires your thumb to actually move in that opposite direction to then reverse your strafe. While a keyboard may be mechanically faster in this regard, the additional speed a keyboard offers I found to be of minimal benefit in practice. 
using a keyboard, at a certain point you can spam your movement keys so fast your character doesn't even move, but instead vibrates in place like a home movies cartoon. The Azeron can't make you vibrate in place like that. Fortunately, when people think of the classic 8080 spam, this isn't just a character vibrating without actually going anywhere. It's them making small movements back and forth very, very quickly. If you've seen the pros movement on consoles using a plain standard controller, they have no issues with this, and neither does the Azeron as you use the same exact analog stick. One direct edge here keyboards have, though, is precision movement. Being able to lightly tap your keys ever so slightly to readjust your position is a lot easier than trying to same with an analog stick. In WASD mode, you also can't change movement speeds with your analog stick like on consoles or the 360 mode, so it can take some practice to make these micro adjustments. I mentioned earlier that the Azeron keypad is highly customizable. Outside of just the keybinds, one of the most important things to customize is the analog stick itself. How you customize the dead zones on this bad boy largely drives how it performs in game. The lower dead zone is the amount of movement the keypad can detect from the analog stick before the movement is applied in game. Too low, and you can notice jitter and drift from even the minor vibrations of your desk. Too high, and it'll take too much analog stick movement to begin moving your character in a speedy fashion. The upper dead zone is the scale of your analog stick from slightly walking to max speed. The higher the number, the more room there is for each step between walking and max speed. Fine tune it for comfort, but for competitive FPS games, you ideally want both of these to have as low as a number as you're comfortable with because it'll mean less thumb movement to begin motions and change directions. For the hyper hyper competitive scene, you'll be able to perform the 80-80 strafe just by rapidly jittering your thumb to the right and left. But you know what you might also want to do in FPS games now instead since, you know, you can? Diagonal strafing. That's right. Now that you can strafe in any direction you want at any time, all while using all your keybinds like normal, hit them with the classic 80-80 strafe before suddenly hitting them with a 3D move. Not only is any form of mid-combat diagonal movement the least expected, it's also harder to track than simple left and right strafes as you add depth by moving in three dimensions. For these reasons, the Azeron's analog stick can easily be used competitively with one keynote to be aware of. Older games like CSGO or games that try and emulate those games like Valorant have a mechanic that requires you to reverse strafe by tapping the opposite key to move in the opposite direction in order to steady slash reset your aim before the game would normally let you if you had just stopped moving. This is gimmicky in my opinion, especially with Valorant being a modern title, but regardless, since naturally you can't use the opposite side of your analog stick at the same time, it's a gimmick that can't be used with just a stick. Fortunately, these games don't have lean mechanics, and the Azeron has plenty of keys, and so you can use the keys you'd normally use for lean left, lean right as simple move left, move right keybinds. Whenever you want to reverse strafe, you quickly tap the corresponding opposite move keybind from the direction you're currently going, and are then able to reverse strafe shoot like normal. Like I said, really only ever need to do this in CSGO though. So. How long does it take to master? A common concern I hear from people is how long it might take to get used to using it. For regular action slash adventure and racing games, the Azeron is fairly easy to learn. And in fact, I recommend getting acquainted with these kinds of games first. But as for FPS games, how quickly you pick up the Azeron depends on several factors. If you've never used a controller before and only know the way of the keyboard and mouse, it will take you the longest amount of time to become confident moving around with the analog stick, as you're not used to using your thumb in such an unfamiliar capacity. If you're making the jump to PC from console and want an Azeron to go with it, it'll still take you some time to learn using keybinds with your left hand since most main controller buttons are on the right side. How comfortable you are changing keybinds around on the fly is also a big factor, as one of the Azeron's largest strengths is allowing you to optimize their placement for your performance. I'd recommend starting out with the most comfortable and familiar keybinds. If you're used to a keyboard, mirror the keybinds to match it until you're more comfortable experimenting around. Some people find labeling the Azeron's keys helps with this. Whatever you decide, you'll want to find a comfortable baseline for your Azeron keypad first, and then as you game, adjust from there for optimization. 
These days, when I'm not drenched in sweat playing FPS games, I still use my Azeron for all my other games, like Warhammer 2, Horizon Zero Dawn, No Man's Sky, Forza, etc. Since you can change all your keybinds in-game to match whatever your Azeron's loadout is, I use the same two onboard profiles for all my games, with the only difference being one in WASD mode and one in 360. It's gotten to the point that I don't even bring my keyboard onto my desk anymore when I'm gaming. My top concern is really only that its software is still in beta. When I first got the Azeron, I will say the software was in alpha, so there's definitely progress there. Also, the analog stick will begin drifting over time, requiring recalibration to fix. This is probably because it's an actual Xbox 360 analog stick and so bound to be prone to the same issues. But it's worth mentioning this as it occurs over time and if you've perfectly calibrated everything a few months ago and are starting to notice it's less than perfect now, it can be really confusing as to why. Also, certain games don't let you use full 360 controller movement while using a mouse. Most do, but as a general rule, if the game has crossplay between PC and console like Warzone or Apex Legends, you'll have to use the 8 directional access WASD mode instead. Lastly, for my slight concerns, I'd recommend also getting the screwdriver they offer as it makes adjusting and fitting the Azeron to your specifications significantly easier, and if the screws used for adjustment become loose later on, it's fast and easy to fix. To help avoid loosening the screws in the first place though, try not to move the keyboard around with the same hand that's actively using it, and instead move it from the base of the keypad. If you drop your Azeron for whatever reason, just do yourself a favor and and recalibrate it on the spot. It doesn't like being dropped. For those curious, here's what my current Azeron keybinds and settings are. I've easily adjusted these over a dozen times as my familiarity grew more and more with the device. The most important thing to know about your keybinds is that you have four main keybinds and eight secondary keybinds. Your main four are used by directly pressing down on the button below your finger and will always be the fastest and easily spammable. I put things like crouch, jump, and sprint on the main line for that very reason. Your secondary keybinds require slight finger movement either up or down to reach, but it's still much faster than moving your finger and then pressing down like you normally would for a keyboard keybind. Outside of these keybinds, everything else is auxiliary that you really wouldn't want to use in mid-fight if you can help it. So that's it really. I love it. It's pretty expensive, but worth it, and if you're looking for a gaming keypad, this is definitely the one to get, no doubt. There's no going back for me, personally, to the point where if mine broke for whatever reason, I'd just get another one and keep on trucking before I even think about going back to a keyboard. I hope you liked the video, thanks for tuning in, and this is Void Hunt, signing out.